So the first thing I'm going to do is my left arm here. I'm going to punch with the bicep into his head and try to get my right elbow to the ground here. Now, if you see him put his weight down, I've got a bit of control over his hips. From here now, I'm going to wave over his face, okay? I'm not going to wave this out here. Or you could tuck it into his chin here. Look at this, guys. I'm not going to wave it out here because you could catch it with this hand and go for the Kimura. I'm going to bring it into the chin here or touch the shoulder and come around, okay? Make it uncomfortable for him. Up and look. Thumb down, thumb up. As the thumb comes up, look, I'm pushing him this way and I'm pulling myself down this way. And that's when I turn, scramble, and come up and collect. You from my hand is the first five come out, bro, partner. You move along, move along. Today's a jiu-jitsu class I wanted to focus on, but like, we've gone over the whole September syllabus. Today was getting up off your back. But I wanted to focus on one thing that's really going to help them, and I thought that was butterfly guard. So we went over butterfly guard again today. We did some drills, we did some sparring. Now we're taking a break and we're going to play out. I'm not going to of course, that's the most important thing. If you ain't got wudu, go make wudu now. We're going to play Salah here now, yeah? Let's go. for me what hit really home when I was told about his death it was how young and healthy he was. I believe he was only 40 years old. He was in good shape. He went to sleep one night, he didn't wake up. Allah never gave him permission to wake up the next morning. So, um, death, as coach said earlier on, death does not discriminate. It can happen to absolutely anyone. You can go to sleep one night and not wake up the next. Definitely the toughest guy on the mat. Well, he was definitely the, the, the toughest guy on the mat. Sorry, he was, he was a tank man. There's nothing much to say to him. He was just a beast on the mat. He had knowledge, he had size, power, strength. Everything everyone was saying was so positive that it just made me think, you know, one person had such an impact on so many people, subhanAllah, just because he was following the rules of Islam, just because he had a smile on his face, just because he acted like a proper man and a Muslim on top of that. Last week, uh, this week, so, so um, just make the walk for and for his family. You know, it's, it's a massive hit for us. He's been training us for a long, long time. And he was only here with us a couple of weeks ago. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was sparring with him and showing him, speaking to him. So it's, it's, it's sad that you know now um, he's gone. So make sure you make the offer because when you pass away, you're gonna want someone to make the offer for you. That's the main thing. Remember how what you're gonna want, you gotta do that for someone else. Gotta do that for your brother. He's been doing MMA since way, way back. So even though he's got this knowledge, and every time I spar him, he would go very light because he's he was a tank on my very. He would go very light, just tip, tap, tap. Even if someone hit him hard, he'd still be going tip, tap, tap. And um, even though he had all that knowledge, he, he never really spoke to me much. He was a very shy and very humble guy. But when I, start, when I did start speaking to him, he just had, a, he had that noor on his face. He had that light on his face, if you know what I mean. He gave a lot of the experienced seniors a lot of problems on the mats. He would never show it off, never brag about it. He was very to himself, quiet. And when he spoke, he spoke the truth. Someone like him is someone you rarely meet. He was a very, very special person. Definitely a role model for me. The way he used to lead the Salah, you know, the way he used to uh, uh, go about his, his 
um, his adab, his, his, you know, his behaviour. Obviously now not having that, it's sort of, it, it's, it's quite sad before you know, you lead to Allah, you're looking around, who's going to lead to Salah today, you don't see Brother Salim, so it's, it's a, every time now we're going to be here praying, I think it's going to be a reminder for everyone. We spend a lot of time on these mats and a lot of time with these brothers so that we can try and take the best from them. And I feel like a big part of that has been taken away. Um, there's a lot of things that I looked up to in, in Brother Salim, you know, especially his softness, this is a big thing, I, I know I keep mentioning it, but it was almost a shock to me. He's a, he's a good friend. He was a good training partner. As as uh, as, as Obeid says, if he wanted to, I'd be squish me like this if I wanted to, but he would always take care of me. All I can say is that I don't have one bad word to say about him. I only have good to say about him. I've known him for it's maybe a good 10 months I've known him for now. But then 10 months, seeing him multiple times a week, it's, it's, it's quite substantial training with him, especially in this sort of environment where you're grappling, you're, you're, you're exchanging that that energy where you're just both learning together but you're learning in the toughest environment. Now that he's not here, it's, 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 uh, it's like a big part that's missing, a big part of our club is missing because that's one pe one person I think a lot of the kids would have looked up to, you know, respond to. But the five before five where take advantage of your youth before your old age, uh, take advantage of your he health before your sickness, take advantage before your wealth, before uh, you become poor. Take advantage of your free time before you become busy and take advantage of life before death. And we all know death is waiting for us all. So inshallah, inshallah, uh, may we all learn from this and uh, may we all make dua, inshallah. So every soul shall taste death. So Brother Salim, mashallah, he was, he was as strong as an ox. He was, he was a young man, he was working. He had everything that you would think of as a young man, a strong man, thriving. He had all of it. He, had, he spent his free time in the gym. He spent his free time with his family. He did, uh, he did there was no, nothing you can say right now that would indicate uh, our brother Salim will pass away, but that, that is that is such as life. But at the end of the day, we, uh, we belong to Allah. Our time is written down. So, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we know this is not our final place. Alhamdulillah, we know that we have an Akhirah Yom Qiyamah. So, inshallah, we will all go to Jannah. Oh, and may Allah open all the gates of Jannah for Brother Salim. May he enter through all of them. May he, may be, may he be given. Uh, his book in his right hand. May he be amongst the first to enter Jannah. May he have shade on the Yom Al Qiyamah. May, may he be amongst those to have Allah's shade on Yom Al Qiyamah. And inshallah, we will all join him in Jannah al Firdos. Amen. Amen.